Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Maria Mbo, coming to you from Afia House here in Nairobi. Now, UHC, that is universal health coverage, is a global aspiration that envisions a world where people can access quality health care from wherever they need it, when they need it, without incurring uh, financial hardships. Now, public health plays a pivotal role in achieving UHC, not just in terms of public awareness, but also advocacy. To speak to us more about the role of public health in achieving UHC is none other than the Principal Secretary, State Department for Public Health and uh, uh, Professional Standards, and that is Mary Mudoni Murioki. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you too. Asante sana. And um, I'd like by starting, uh, you know, by asking you, what has been um, new the, the achievement so far in as far as you know uh, UHC is concerned and public health? Well, thank you very much, and thank you for that question. Um, I want to acknowledge that when a place does not have a structure or a plan, people fail. So what we have been able to do is to build on a structure and have a plan on, uh, on how to move forward uh, towards achieving the universal health coverage. And one of the key things that we have been able to do as a ministry and as a department is to champion the four bills that you have been seeing in Parliament, the primary health care bill, we have the digitization bill, we have the, um, the, the facility improvement fund bill, and we have the social health bill. And those four bills are really going to structure us into how do we move forward in terms of insurance, in terms of uh, uh, improvement in our facilities, in terms of the primary care networks, and, 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 and many other things, uh, structuring the community health promoters. And uh, the second thing that we have been able to do, just like I've mentioned, is uh, uh, recruiting and equipping 100,000 community health promoters across the country. And this has been in conjunction with our county government. Remember, health is a devolved system. And um, our county governments play a critical role in terms of implementing the health care of this country. The other thing is uh, establishing the 315 um, primary care networks. And this will help us with the referral system, that a community health promoter will be in your household, detect that you, have, you may be having um, something that she, can, she or he may not handle, and refer you to the nearest facility, health facility, so that you may get assisted. And the, the other thing that we have been able to do very successfully is assessing the levels of service and our um, our health facilities. We have assessed more than 14,000 health faci facilities across the country and we have the report. And the essence of doing this assessment basically is to uh, look at the gaps that we have in our in in our facilities across the country this includes the public facilities um, the, the private sector facilities and equally the faith-based uh, institutions uh, the facilities that are run by faith-based uh, institutions this is to assess what gaps do we have with the human resources do we have enough uh, health staff that can run this uh, facility in the right way. When we need uh, referrals, do we have the right uh, doctor, the right nurse, the right um, any staff that is uh, involved in, in, in the human resource for health? Equally, do we have enough equipment in these facilities? What is it that we can do to ensure that this uh, even proper disposable of um, of, 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 of materials uh, mm. from our hospitals mm. to avoid more spread of diseases, you know. So from top of my mind, we have those key things that we have been able to do to ensure that we achieve the universal health coverage for this country. And we are very determined that this is going to happen. Okay. 
Uh, you've just mentioned uh, you've been doing an assessment of the health facilities in terms of just the equipment, human resources for health. Could you share with us some of the gaps that you've, you've, you've identified, if possible, and uh, what are some of the steps that are going to be taken? Because we know very well, for instance, our doctor to a patient ratio is still, you know, not up to standard, at least not uh, uh, to the World Health Organization, you know, requirements. Um, we also have, uh, you know, uh, equipment, like you said. It's one thing to have the health facilities and somebody is sick, but are they going to get the services they need when they reach those facilities? Really, I do not want to preempt because we have not made this report public. We are still in the initial stages of uh, really internalizing from from the uh, from our system. Uh, however, just like you're talking about uh, some of the levels of uh, or some of the facilities may be having higher levels that they are, they, they deserve. You may have um, a, a facility which has been rated level four and and possibly your services, the quality of care is that of a level one or level two. Mm. And those are some of the gaps that we need to fix. Uh, reassess, uh, reinspect these facilities and ensure we give them the correct levels so that in the referral system, we will not be referring people to shells, you know. We would want to ensure that if we tell you this is where you will get your mammogram, then there is a doctor to uh, check you on that. If uh, it is issues of gynecology, then we will have a gynecologist in place. And, 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 and the level of hospital has been rated very well. And of course, the, 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 the gaps in the human resources um, is glaring in some of the health, our health facilities, and we would want to fix that. Um, and conversations around this has been ongoing going also equally with the, with the county governments, so that they continue putting enough budgets for employing um, uh, the health uh, assistance, uh, human resources uh, in their um, in their facilities. So. This is an ongoing thing, and we will be able to put the report in public, mm -hmm. uh, and equally the recommendations that will be presented to uh, to everybody to see on the progress. Again, the the equipping of our hospitals, and that is why we came up with the facility improvement uh, fund to ensure that uh, once we are able to establish the level of facility, then the facility, the equipment will be in tandem with what we are talking about. The quality of care is very, very important for us as we move forward. To you know, you've, talked about, um, you, you, you've talked about the levels of facilities. As Kenyans, personally, we walk into any hospital when we are sick, you know, uh, whether it's Kenyatta, which is the referral hospital, and then we have the dispensaries. Maybe briefly, if you could touch on the need to understand that there, there's going to come a time, I'm not so sure this with the social health you know, uh, facility that we're going to be having, that you will only be able to ac access certain levels with your health insurance before you refer to a certain level. Maybe you could just help us understand that. The social health bill is going to sort a lot of these issues because uh, unlike before where we th th there were gaps around uh, the insurance issue, the social health uh, insurance is going to cover a lot more especially when you talk about screening, you know, uh, like we are talking, we, we are looking at October month being the screening for breast cancer and all. You'll be able to walk into a facility and, and get that service done. However, I need to mention that when I talk about levels of hospitals, I'm talking about the primary care levels where we talk about the clinics uh, at the village level, you know, uh, the, 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 the dispensaries at the, health, uh, the, at the lowest level of Mashinani. And we have the referral hospitals which are run by the national government. The rest of the hospitals are run by the county government. And that is why this move for universal health care cannot be done if the two levels of government are not working in tandem. Therefore, it will be very critical to see that the, the, the social health insurance is covering all the levels, right from Mashinani to the referral hospitals.
Okay. Now, let's delve into the issue of uh, surveillance and uh, disease prevention. That's a very uh, big role uh, for the public health uh, department. So, what are some of the systems that have been put in place? Because um, just recently, you know, there was a cholera outbreak. You know, uh, again, we've been, the government was also, the Ministry of Health was also running the polio vaccine, uh, you know, campaign. And very well, polio has been one of the at least diseases that Kenya has really worked very hard in terms of eradicating and all that. So w what is the place of, uh, you know, disease surveillance? Thank you for that question. And uh, yes, uh, we have had outbreaks and, and especially at the border points where there's a lot of influx of refugees, influx of trade uh, going on between two countries or the people who border the, uh, the Kenyan government. We have been able to really do a lot of surveillance in terms of uh, uh, establishing where is, uh, where is this coming from, what, who are the people or what are the characteristics of the, the, the people who are um, detected with certain diseases. And we have been able to do a lot of screening at the Buddha Point through our port health. Our port health officers are in every port of entry. Uh, whether it is at the airports or at the sea, uh, at the ocean, uh, uh, the port, or at the at the border points like Malaba or um, any other uh, port of entry. Therefore, we have been able to detect some of these diseases quite early and been able to suppress them at the earliest point of opportunity. We've also encouraged collaborations. We have had. Uh, uh, partnerships with the uh, World Health Organizations and other organizations that have been able to assist us with both financial and uh, uh, technical capacity to ensure that we are able to suppress these issues at, and nip them at the uh, earliest point of um, detection. And, and also we've been able to create isolation points at the border points. Uh, uh, whenever we realize that somebody has, um, has signs of symptoms, we are able either to refer them to hospital or isolate them uh, early enough, especially at the ref refugee camps, to ensure that we protect any other person who is um, uh, in that area. We have championed vaccinations across the country, as you have seen in the last uh, few days. Uh, from last week, we have been doing the oral uh, campaign, uh, the, the oral vaccination campaign for polio, mm -hmm. uh, where we were targeting, we had 3 million 500 doses and we were targeting 3 million and uh, uh, point two children across the country. And this, these were children below five years. However, we equally had another 150,000 doses that were targeting children below the, f the age of 15 years. And this was brought about because of the detection of uh, um, polio in a seven-year-old child. And we realized we cannot wish away the, the, that polio only affects children below five years. It could be more mm -hmm. and, and it could also maybe uh, an issue with children who are above um, five years. Therefore, we extended and we got more doses that would cater for that cadre. Therefore, we are very, very, very keen about our borders and equally in our households, especially cholera a disease that is brought about by poor hygiene and uh, you know environments that are not safe lack of clean water you know uh, lack of basic personal hygiene mm -hmm. and, and you know just to, like you've already mentioned afya machinani afya nyumbani you know cholera like you said it's about sanitation it's about your, your environment uh, and all that so somebody would ask if 60 years after independence we are still struggling with, can I say, most of the basic diseases that just takes sanitation, you know, cleanliness. So how far then are we in achieving universal healthcare coverage? I am very convinced that this could be the last stroke of it and we are going to hack it. One, we have already come up with policies and procedures on how to go out there and educate people more and more 
practically, we do not want to practice uh, public health in our boardrooms. We want to go to the to, to the masses and reach out to them and ensure that they very well know. There's one thing to sit here in, the t uh, in this uh, station and, and talk about public health. And there's another one going to where my parents live or anybody else is living and do it practically with them. And we have a lot of support from our partners in this to ensure that the WASH programs are reaching directly to the people and we are practically encouraging them to do the right thing. Public health is about practicability. It is not about talking, it's not about just uh, mentioning or, 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 or saying what systems we have put in place, but what is it that we are doing? We have the school health, encouraging the school children to keep, keep, keep up and, and, and get back to what we have been doing. Cle basic cleaning of hands, you know, disposing, um, uh, disposal of, uh, you know, waste uh, products. And, and, and uh, also collaborating with other ministries, like housing, when they are constructing their houses. Because it's a social economy. Transport, you know? yeah. yes, mm -hmm. the, the, the transport system. Mm -hmm. If you go to the trenches, you know, alongside the road, how clean are they? Mm -hmm. Who is responsible? Reaching out to the very person who is supposed to act in a, ma in, in a way that will eradicate mm -hmm. this. Because, uh, when you look at... Um, the mitigation al around uh, the, the El Nino, the possible El Nino range that is coming. We have been very keen in ensuring that we inform the public. It is the high time. Look at your structures. How safe are they? You know, can we build some clean trenches that can clear out the, the waste that is going to come with the, uh, the lot of water? You know, sleeping under mosquito nets to prevent the vector borne diseases. You know. Yeah, and 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 you know, you, you you've really brought a fundamental, um, can I say, uh, aspect to achieving universal health care uh, coverage in uh, in as far as public health is, is concerned, and uh, there are social determinants of health, whether it's housing, it's environment. So there is need for that synergy. Um, so let's come to the uh, very important role of community, can I say community health strategy, because for, for universal health coverage to be achieved, then it's a personal responsibility. So we are going back to primary health care, where we have the community health promoters. Uh, then you have 100,000 of them already, you know, absorbed. Uh, and, but is that enough? You know, we are almost 50 plus population. So what are the strategies in ensuring that Kenyans will be covered as far as this primary health care is concerned? Thank you. I want to tell you that we may be, Kenya may be having the largest number of community health promoters. And, and, and um, if you compare with other countries. And why I say this, uh, what the strategy is to ensure that one community health promoter is serving a hundred, a hundred households in a vicinity, mm -hmm. and a hundred households uh, comparably is not many. Uh, and these are the people who are your neighbors, just around you. And a hundred households you can cover in a month. And again, we have gadgets to equally monitor on how it is going. Work in progress because Rome was never built in a day. We cannot just say right now that uh, it is not going to happen or they are not enough for, for the masses and we have not even started. The strategy right now that is in place, a hundred households, every community health promoter with a gadget that is going to monitor this in a very special way that uh, you keen, I have visited family A. I have registered for uh, the, the, the whole household. These are the issues that I have detected. Um, the, there's need for beefing up my, uh, the, the, the role that I'm playing, maybe with a nurse or, or a doctor who needs to see uh, mental health issues or thereabout. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I am very confident that these are issues that can be sorted by the 100,000. So uh, the other question that I would want you to, to clarify, 
you know, there's been a bit of talk here and there. Uh, community health uh, promoters, doctors who can diagnose and treat right in the home so that when they come to my house and they tell me, for instance, uh, we've detected you have high blood pressure or diabetes type 2 for that matter. So I should just wait in the house, uh, like, you know, they're going to bring me medicine or is their work just to, can I say, detect and then to refer? Yeah. I, I want to clarify first that a community health promoter is not replacing any CADA, any professional CADA that has been trained uh, from any institution. A community health promoter's work is basically to detect, to do a, a, a bit of surveillance, uh, to refer, you know, and, and to ensure that um, we are getting information from the ground on what is happening in our communities. And first and foremost, they, their importance is to speak on healthy lifestyle which basically even me and you, even from a uh, point of uh, not having gone a professional course, mm -hmm. you can talk about it. You were taught even in primary school about balanced diets. So it's basically to, co to continually remind the masses, remind the people that you need to eat more vitamins, more than carbohydrates, more than to remove some of these diseases, uh, lifestyle diseases, if, if, uh, you know, uh, diseases uh, like high blood pressure coming it down you know malnutrition mm -hmm. it will really help and then also uh, providing disease surveillance assuming there was a wedding happening here and all of a sudden the whole village everybody is diarrheaing and there's a community health promoter that community health promoter is the one who will actually report and tell the nearest health facility that in this village there is an, uh, there's some sort of um, uh, um, um, there's some sort of um, outbreak or something that is abnormal that is happening to the members of the community, and then the health uh, uh, the health uh, staff will be able to react in the best manner possible, or even refer those affected and infected individuals to the health facilities. Again, um, they will be able to enroll and monitor the health status of the members of a household. In a certain household or a homestead, do we have a continuous um, issue with mental health illness, for instance? And we can dig deeper and know what is bringing this mental health illness is it because they are affected of one of their member of the family being very sick maybe a chronic disease or it is probably because of uh, drug abuse and we can be able to convince them that you need help sometimes mental health is just a status that people don't believe that they need help mm -hmm. they actually are very convinced they are very okay but if the the community health promoter may be able to detect such kind of uh, issues, then they are able to escalate them to the best way possible. And of course, maintain records of members of a, of a household. And these records are going to help the Ministry of Health in terms of planning. How much money do we need to put into the healthcare system? How do we need to take care of a certain geographical area uh, within a certain place, uh, you know, because we already know the numbers. Some have passed on. So those records are really going to help us moving forward. <laughs> Monitoring the rehabilitation of members of the society and reintegration of the same. Look at uh, people who are in correctional services. Sometimes when I have worked in correctional services, so I know, sometimes when we release these people, they just go to the society and maybe the probation officers uh, have not been able to detect where this person is, is living. Mm -hmm. So so valence around the same, that there's a person we are rehabilitating and the person needs more care, then they will be able to call even the probation officers to come to a certain area you know, 
uh, geographical area and, 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 and help that person to reintegrate in their society in a better manner. So it is not basically just about talking about uh, blood pressure and, and uh, uh, blood sugar and nutrition. There is a lot more cohesion of the society and ensuring that we are having a healthy nation. So community health promoter will not replace anybody but they will be able to raise the alarms of what is happening around the society. These people have been trained and kitted. They have been trained on ethics that the health of an individual is a security issue. So don't go talking about it. These people have been kitted. They've been given basic first aid information that they can be able to help uh, a certain community. When we are talking about moving from curative to preventive and promotive, this is the promotion that we are talking about. When I am the PS and I'm in my office, I know there's somebody who is speaking my language. I know there's somebody who is spreading the gospel of preventive and promotive. Thank you. So community health promoters are key to achieving you know, promotive and preventive health. And essentially, uh, what you're saying, universal health coverage as a whole. So we cannot achieve universal health coverage without embracing community health strategy. If men voted that, they are part of the strategy. Of, of the strategy, and that is why we mm -hmm. ha we have the primary health care bill, which community health promoters are entrenched in that. Mm -hmm. Remember, we have had the community health volunteers for a long time more than 10 years, mm -hmm. but they have never been recognized. recognized. So, but this they, is, a, is a milestone for them. This I, I, is a big milestone for them, and they will have a stipend. They have never been paid even a coin by anybody. But what we are saying is they are also not workers. So they are not at the level where we have a negotiation of salary, yeah. but we are saying we appreciate, we appreciate you. So we are giving you a stipend. Instead of you using your own money, to go to household A and B, then we can give you some a little stipend to actually even give you water along the way, or 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 just appreciation that you have done it. You are part of us, and we appreciate you. Asante sana, PS. thank you for taking your time and explain to us the role of public health you know uh, in as far as uh, achieving universal health coverage and definitely the government and the ministry of health has been emphasizing that uh, promotive and preventive health is the place to emphasize and for us to move on uh, as a healthy nation for that matter so thank you once more back at home for taking your time and listening to us and as, as ps has already uh, mentioned uh, on the 20th of uh, october is the Mashuja Day, which is themed under the universal health coverage. Community health promoters are fundamental and key in actually driving universal health coverage. So thank you once again. My name is Mariambo. Hope to see you again next time.